I'm Tony Sinnett, puppet maker and puppeteer, and we've just finished building this wooden carved Pinocchio marionette over on Patreon. And in this free video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple wire controller for your marionette. Now, in all things puppet making, there's no definitive right way of doing something, so I'm going to show you a couple of variations on the basic upright rod control. Now, this is really for human type characters or things that stand upright. You may need to vary this if you're building. Uh, an animal or a four-legged creature or something, but we'll just go through the basics of this first and you can see variations from then on. Now we need some timber. I've got some 25mm square here by about 100mm long, which is about 90mm. So that's about an inch by three and a half inches. Again, this is not a definitive size. This is just something that uh, I'm going to use for this build. You may want to scale it up if your puppet's bigger or scale it down if you've got a smaller puppet or, or if it's for smaller hands such as children's hands. I've also got another piece here which is about five inches, uh, about 11 12 centimeters by just over a quarter of an inch thick, about eight mil something like that, seven or eight mil. Again it doesn't really matter. You'll see when we get to the end how it, how it all works and which pieces you can vary and which you can't. You also need some rod. This is a three mil rod, steel, and this is a four mil. Now, again, the longer the puppet you have, the thicker the rod you're going to need. And if you're building uh, a puppet for children, it's there's not that much difference between the head height and the controller height, then you can possibly get away with the even thinner um, piece of steel than this. But this is three mil. This is a decent, um, strength of, of rod it won't bend or flex too much. This 4mm obviously is stiffer still but you'd probably struggle to bend this without a vice. You might be able to do it particularly if you warm it up first but if you're going to go 4mm or bigger I'd advise you have a, a vice to hand so that you can do the bending. So our first thing to do is to drill through the center of this piece all the way through and it needs to be a good clearance for the rod size that you're using. So uh, say in this case we're using a three mil rod so we're going to have a hole that's three millimeters or three and a half millimeters or maybe even four millimeters would be okay. This is going to we need this piece to be able to rotate around the rod that's going to slide through the middle. So I'm going to mark this up first and drill through Going to go through from both ends because uh, that way hopefully it'll be easier to get the center line up. And this piece again we need to mark up the center and the center in this direction and you can either mark it up center top to bottom or you can just have this sitting on the bottom as long as it's a center hole there. So if you imagine it it's like this. But if it's in the middle, that's fine too. It doesn't matter, whichever's easiest for you. Now I'm over here at the drill press and I've marked up the centre here of this block, both sides, by simply drawing across from corner to corner, which gives me the centre point. So I'm going to drill in from both sides just to get a nice hole all the way through. I've got my drill bit, which is a nice clearance uh, for the rod diameter. And I've also marked up this piece centre this way and the centre of the block as it sits roughly like that. So not in, not the centre of there but slightly down. But again don't worry too much about that. So we'll get these drilled and then we'll show you the next stage.
So I've just sanded off the corners of the block here. Hopefully you can see. And that just makes it a little bit more comfortable in the hand. You haven't got any sharp corners for your fingers or thumbs. So we would glue these pieces together. So I've just got some, you can use wood glue, but I've just got some super glue here or speed because it will set a lot quicker. I'm going to pop my rod through, get this piece lined up. Make sure it's on square. Wait a few seconds for it to set. Now in order to make this more secure, what you could do is pop some small pins through from the front and pin it in place as well, which will help it be stronger than just the glue. Okay, it should be set now. So now we've got our rocker piece, like so. Now, so I'm going to show you two variations. They're very similar, but not exactly the same. But the first thing we want to do is with our rod, we're going to bend a loop, a small loop onto the end. You need a decent pair of pliers. You can even use round nose pliers if you want to get a nice rounded loop. So we've bent on a loop like so. And we're coming back from that a little way, maybe an inch or so, we're going to just put another small bend a few degrees, so we're bending this down. Okay, so I said we've got two variations. Now we can either go with this from the front through if we put it this way, this gives us a loop for a run-through string for the hands. So a string from one hand would come up from the puppet, go through this loop here and down to the other hand, and that's called a run-through string. And we'll pop our two leg strings either side here. So next we would bend here 90 degrees downwards, and that would create... Let me show you here. That would create the bend which will come to the head of our puppet. So very simple, just a 90 degrees, that's what stops this from moving around too much, just lo locates it in place and that's your rocker, and there it goes to the head. Or we can do it another way. This will mean you will require another piece of wire or maybe a um, a screw uh, eye or something like that to, for your hand strings. We put it through from the back. So we put it through from the back up to where we've bent. That stops that from moving backwards or forwards. And now we bend at 90 degrees from the front. So let's do that, just do that freehand for the moment. Okay, so now we have a similar idea, but this time we've got the rod coming out of the front of the controller down to the head of the puppet. This loop here could be kept for extra stringing either to the back or to the back of the elbows or to the back of the heels to get a little bit extra movement, or you can just leave it there as decorative. All this does is, if you're leaving it there as decorative, just stops this from coming off. So now we've got the... the controller wire coming down to the head of the puppet in this direction. We now just need to drill a couple of holes here and here, and you want to match these up to the width of the knees on your puppet. So 
So roughly you take the distance between the knees and you work it off from center. But it doesn't matter if you go a bit wider, sometimes it helps to go, to go a little bit wider. So that's what I mean about adjusting the size of your controller. I'm not giving you definite sizes because it does depend on the size of your puppet. The bigger your puppet, possibly the bigger the controller, the bigger, the wider this is going to need, need to be. And maybe, you know, you might need a slightly longer, if it's a big heavy puppet, a bit more of a handhold on there. So with our controller, either with the rod coming out the front or the rod coming out the back, we just need to drill our two holes for the legs, the leg strings. Like so. So you can have a leg string coming up through there, tie it off. And then we just need, if, if you're doing it the other way, you've already got your loop run through string for the hands, as I'll show you on this Pinocchio here. So we have a run through string. This hand string here comes up through this loop and down the other side to the other hand. So it's a continuous string, which allows me to pull this, this one string for this hand, but also I can pull it and get the other hand as well, or I can get both hands, just by pulling this one string. So if you've done it this way, you've already got your loop. If you've done it this way, we need a loop for the hands. So the easiest thing to do from there is to drill another little hole at the top here. And then get a screw eye, such as something like this, and pop in. wind that in and there you have your run through loop for your hands on there and you've got an extra position here if you want to add any strings. Now you can make them more intricate by turning this section here. You could even carve this, you could carve some detail into there, you can paint it and on the front here rather than just having a rectangle you could create a nice shape there as well. Just for a little bit more interest, just makes it look a little bit prettier. Doesn't really affect the operation in any way, just makes it more attractive, that's all. So let's just talk quickly about what are the advantages and disadvantages of having the rod coming out of the front as opposed to out of the back. Well, let's look at this one first. With the rod coming from the head to the back of the control, as I said before, it's made all in one piece. You've already got this loop for the run-through string for the hands, so it's quicker, easier to make, arguably looks more neat and tidy. Um, but it also has one function which may be useful to you. Because this piece is now in front of the head of the puppet, it allows for the pulling of the legs to be slightly forwards. Rather than pulling straight upwards, they're pulling sl at a slight forward angle, which I think does help the walking very slightly. However, this design does have advantages as well, and that is that we've got this extra loop here for maybe putting a string to the heels or the elbows or even to the back. We do have to add on this extra piece here for the hamstring, but we have got an advantage whereby if you're using two marionettes, if you're doing some theatre performance and you've got two, having to have two in one hand, if you wanted the puppets to come together, if they were like this, they wouldn't get very close together because the controls would be banging up against each other. If they're like this, the controls can come that close and because that is now the head of the puppet, as opposed to here being set forwards of the head, it means the two puppets could come face to face, could come right up close to each other. So that might be an advantage that you need. And the other advantage, possibly, is that if you wanted to display your puppet, if you wanted to hang it on the wall or make a stand, this is probably easier to work with. You've got something to grip onto here for the for the stand to hold onto or the bracket, so it would just help the display a little bit. But either way is fine, and that's a quick and easy way to make yourself a controller for your wooden carved puppet. <laughs>